Today we are looking at embellishments for card making. Now there's so many different possibilities with embellishments. I'm going to be covering seven different ones, probably seven of the most popular ones, to kind of beat the jargon for you and show you the best way to use each one. Hopefully you'll find this video helpful whether you are a beginner or experienced crafter. We'd love it if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel and check down in the description below for the links for everything that I'm using. Let's start with bows. Now bows are probably one of the first ever embellishments to be used in card making, mostly probably because lots of us had scraps of fabric and ribbons laying around the home and we didn't need to go out and buy anything special to be able to add them to our projects. Nowadays there is such a wide range of ribbon available, twine, fabric scraps, even paper that can bend into these bow shapes. So you've got such a variety of options available to you. There's also now options for actually creating the bows rather than having to do them by hand. Um, one of the bigger ones for bigger bows are things like bow makers. They are available. This is one that I have. There are different varieties available on Craft Stash as well. They are usually pretty inexpensive. So if you are going to be making a lot of bows, probably time to pick one of these up. You can though, however, also create smaller bows just on the usual household fork. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm going to add a bow to this hedgehog here. I think that'll look really cute if she's got a tiny bow in her hair. And I've got this really cute little satin ribbon. So I'm going to thread this ribbon through the center of my fork, wrap it round the fork, all the way around and then back through the center again so if I just pull that down hopefully you can see that has gone through the center around the entire fork and then back through the center again I'm going to use a pair of scissors to just snip this and I always ensure that I'm going to be snipping it longer than what I'm going to need just to give me some freedom with tying the bow nice and tight and then this top one that's just come through from the back is going to feed through the centre of the fork, back round to the front there, and then we're going to tie a knot in the two tails. So I like with bows to call them ears and tails. So if you imagine rabbit ears and I suppose rabbit tails, although they're long, you can then slide that off the fork and you've got yourself a really cute little bow there, as you can see, nice and neat really really sweet. So now I'm just going to trim those tails to the size that I need and I'd pop that on my project just there. Isn't that sweet? How gorgeous is that and how quick and easy. So bows are a fantastic way of adding a tactile element or embellishment to your cards and as I say with a plethora of different materials. Another very popular embellishment is flowers on a card. So with flowers, there are so many different types that you can put on. Probably my favorite is these three dimensional ones that are pre-made. Uh, you just need to arrange them on your card and you pick and choose the colors that suit your project. There's also lots and lots of dyes that are in floral shapes, not just florals, things like berries and foliage as well. So you can really build up a lovely cluster and you can layer these as well. Now these, if you are cutting dyes into flower shapes and putting them on your card, you can keep them a little more flat, particularly if you're thinking about the postage element. Then you've also got things like flower making foam, for example, and you've got all your typical flower making elements such as the wires and the tape as well to actually make realistic looking flowers. So I'm going to focus on the pre-made ones today. I have so many of them that I've collected over the years and I'm going to just bring in this card and show you a couple of tips for adhering and positioning your flowers on a card. So I've got this card which is pretty, it's very contemporary, it's quite plain at the moment, it needs a little bit of something dimensional just to lift it. So I'm going to put a spray of flowers around here. Um, I usually concentrate my flowers in a particular area and I don't try to cover the card or anything like that. 
I would nearly always say you want to adhere your flowers with a hot glue as well if you've got one or certainly a very strong dimensional glue something like silicon glue um, because they are dimensional there is a lot of weight to them compared to say a paper embellishment so you definitely want to be ensuring that these are really well secured on and obviously as I've kind of mentioned with the die cut flowers do consider how you're going to be posting these if you are and what sort of envelope that they will be going into as well. A lot of the flowers you can actually flatten or come quite flat anyway. So choosing flowers for this project, I'm actually going to pick out flowers that are within these colours. I've got lots of different ones here, but not just flowers either. I've got berries here that are kind of sparkly. They'll go really nicely with the Christmas theme. I've got some teals here, mint greens, and then I've also got a few that have a touch of the darker blue on that will suit this square. I'm not going to worry too much if there's a particular colour that I haven't got, but just the pinks and the blues will be perfect, or pinks and greens really will be perfect. And I very often use as fillers uh, white flowers, so if I've got a white flower or two they can go in as well, and they will just fill in gaps. So there's a nice selection for now. Um, you can also ink these. What I might do later on is add a touch of colour to this pink. It's not quite the same pink as we've got here, but you know, for now it'll be okay. And I can go in with a stencil brush and just pick up a little bit of ink onto the ends of the petals to just change the colour ever so slightly. Because they're paper, usually you can do that. You can also buy these flowers in fabric as well but you still have the option of inking them. So I always start with my largest flower, which is this one, and I'm going to place that down somewhere near the centre where my cluster will be. So as I say, hot glue gun, small blob on the end. I always cut the stems reasonably short as well. So there's my first flower. I mean, that looks pretty anyway. And then I work out to either side. So this is just going to come round these two corners a little bit. It's not too big, um, but I work out each side and I do it evenly, as in I do one at the top and then I'll do one at the bottom or vice versa. Now with this, I'm then going to my sort of mid mid-sized embellishments here and I work my way down until I get to the smallest ones. So I tend to kind of set the shape with the largest flowers. So that would be that one. And then let's go in with, oh, let's do this one. I've got a glue string there. There we go. So I don't really want my flowers to cover any more of an area than that. So with these remaining ones, I'm going to now start filling in gaps and layering up a little. So this purple colour can go just in there this pink one. I'm going, I've left the stem a little bit longer on this. I'm going to tuck that underneath there. There we go, that's pretty. And then probably just one more on here of those size. And I've got some berries so I can just pop my berries onto the ends. Now with the berries or with any stem really, you can actually take a pokey tool or a an embossing ball tool and you can just twist the stem around the berry and that just gives it an extra bit of dimension. So I'll lay that flat and then pop the glue underneath here. There we go. And I'll do the same with this one. There we go, that's pretty. Now I've got a couple here that I haven't used, but I don't feel I need those, so they'll go back in my bag with the rest of my florals. I've got some stamen there as well that would have been pretty, but I don't need them. So you can see, start working down smaller and smaller until you get to your smallest flowers. Now there are flowers that are so small, they're a little bit like things like gypsophilia, baby's breath, that you can also just pop into your cluster afterwards. That's kind of my basic rules for creating a cluster of florals on a card. Now sequins, gems and pearls, they all kind of fall under the same bracket when it comes to embellishments and I think they are the perfect finishing touch, particularly if you like something like a little bit of sparkle. So usually sequins give the most sparkle, as you can see there we've got some lovely sequins scattered around this one 
you can have subtle as well so this one just has some little glass beads they're all flat back and I definitely recommend if you are looking for embellishments like this to put on your cards I would look for something that has a flat back to it here but you've just got the little water droplets around there or you can have something quite bold so these black gems here are really bold and stand out against the rainbow colored background again you can have something that is kind of a different colour to the rest of the card, but a nice accent colour. So here I've used gold, again they are flat backed. They just tie in nicely with the gold sentiment. And of course they don't have to be scattered around in that way, they can actually be used as things like shakers. So I've got sequins in here, but everything that you can see here, glass beads, sequins, pearls and gems, they can all be used as a shaker element. So I'm going to pop some sequins or some black, I think, onto this card because it's going to show up nicely, just to look a little bit like almost ink splats out from the sentiment there, as if that's sort of been stamped or printed on and there's been some ink drop around as it's been done. That sort of look, it just brings that black in. It gives it a bit of an artsy look. Again, this is a finishing touch that I nearly always add to my cards. I absolutely love it. And two of the tools I definitely recommend you have if you're looking to put gems and pearls and such on your cards is either some tweezers, some fine tweezers, or a pickup tool. Now, a pickup tool from Craft Stash is really inexpensive. We do have our own Craft Stash ones, and they're effectively sort of a waxy lead in them. You can sharpen them when you need to with a normal pencil sharpener. Um, and I would say if you're in a room that's not particularly warm, just pinch the point or the first time you're using it just pinch that for a few moments before you get started and that kind of just softens the the uh, lead there so it can grip onto the pearls so what i tend to do is work in odd numbers and i'll have say i'm going to put five on here i'll have two at the top three at the bottom and i will put two at the top um, I would start with the cl anything closest to the vocal feature would be larger anything getting further away would get smaller so I might have a medium sized gem here and a slightly smaller one up here then I would have a good size one there a medium one there and then right next to it so I vary the width the distance apart for the gems and I tend to put um, a few glue spots down first before I go on and start adding my gems. So then let's use my pick up pencil and put these on. So starting with the larger ones first, I go with the ones that are flat. And then let's find, I'm sort of getting low on the smaller ones. This is where tweezers come in handy because if they're actually uh, laid down on your desk or in your pot upside down the tweezers are handy for picking them up and just putting them back down the way they should be let's just see I don't have another smaller one. Oh, there's one there's one more small one so as I'm working further away my gems get a little bit smaller so just something like usually the placement should be quite random I think I'd move that one along a little bit the glue would usually all dry clear and the glue that I've used is just a simple paper craft white glue so something like the craft stash glue so there's just a few sparkles to add as an accent to a card very easy to do but definitely an embellishment essential Next up is ephemera and ephemera is something that's been around again for many years in the crafting industry and it comes in many different shapes and forms. Usually we would see ephemera as a single use of paper items, nearly always created from paper or paper based material and these would be all of a similar theme within a bag something like that so something like this would be like ephemera we've got some here that are actually printed onto acetate some florals but that's ten that tends to be how we buy ephemera now you can also get them in packets with papers so this was a sheet that had some papers in with it as well that matched and then a few sheets of ephemera and this is all die cut and it just pops out so I've got a selection here. This is just grabbed from my ephemera box. I've got all sorts here, but I've got a couple of projects to show you with ephemera actually in use so you can see how it works. So here is a project that we've done on the Craft Stash YouTube channel 
This was creating our own ephemera. So we created all the journaling pieces here, or rather all the ephemera that's kind of of a vintage feel, including the tag in the background as well. So there is a tutorial on that if you'd like to go and have a look at that. On this card, I actually created my own ephemera again um, and just layered everything up. So by creating your own, you can actually stick to the same sort of color scheme if you want to. I've layered it all up. So I've kind of clustered it together a bit like we did with the flowers, um, just kept everything reasonably central and in one area. So there's another way of using ephemera, just layering it up. Now ephemera is really popular within journaling and scrapbooking as well. Now moving on to washi tape as an embellishment. So washi tape is traditionally used as a border or actually to hold things like photos down and journaling tags down in scrapbooking, but more and more it's being used as an actual embellishment. So I thought I'd introduce this into this video as well. So washi tape can come in so many different styles, thicknesses or widths as well, um, colours, and it can also come on a roll or it can come on a sheet nowadays also. So like I say, washi doesn't have to be just stuck onto a card. You can actually create a fun background with it as well, which is what I'm going to do very quickly here for you. So I've just got a selection of washi here and I'm going to use these strips and I'm actually going to create myself a fun background to die cut and use on a card. So I've layered up my washi tape strips on a scrap piece of cardstock and I'm going to use a simple star shaped die to cut these out. So simply by layering that washi tape onto my paper. Now the beauty of washi tape is that it's translucent so you can actually see the other layers underneath. This also means when you're placing it onto a card, you can still see what's underneath there as well. So maybe you've got some stamping or a fun background. You put just a strip of washi tape on, you're going to see underneath there as well. So I've just raised that cardstock up then and that gives a really, really pretty look. So just as an example of how I might use washi tape in another way is if I just want it to look like I've got a little bit of a stamped image. In fact, let's use this washi tape strip here. So rather than stamping, I can use washi and I can tear it as well, which makes it super easy to use. I like to tear both ends. I'm just going to add a small bit to the top of that card there. And then another small bit down the bottom also, but I can layer this over the existing embellishments here. So I've got a little bit on both sides. So something like that. So it looks like a little bit of an embellishment, a little bit of stamping, for example. And it really does help just lift and add layers and dimension to a project. Another embellishment that's been around for many years, but in fact is really simple to make your own versions of is tags and notebooks, things like this. So my favourite to stock up on when I see them is luggage tags. So luggage tags can be found in things like post offices, for example, and they are usually um, a neutral colour. But I did find some red ones once and they often have the string included, which is a bonus. And these are brilliant to use as things like journaling tags on your scrapbook pages, but definitely as layers on your cards as well to pop your focus on. So maybe that's your sentiment or maybe that's your embellishment so your um, like your image whatever that may be now one way I like to use these particular tags and I'm going to show you on this card is to just use the very end of interest so the bit that's got the uh, eyelet in and the string in and I tend to snip that off and then I will do one of two things depending on the card design. So for this one, I would tuck this underneath the embellishments so that the tag is actually part of the embellishment of the cluster of the main focal point, just like so. So I would probably just adhere this so that it sort of floats around the design there. And that's an extra layer to my card. But alternatively, if I just take this out, if this card was a little bit larger and we had a really big bit of white space at the top here, I might take this tag, whether it's with or without the strings, with this bit I'm just going to trim it a little bit shorter, 
and I would adhere that to the edge of the card or the edge of the matte and layer at the top. Now this one doesn't need it really because we've got everything almost central so there isn't really any large areas that have a blank space but if you do have a blank space and you want to fill it with something subtle just putting the edge of a tag onto the edge of your card in that area is absolutely perfect. So on this card here, I've got a blank space at the top. I could put this, adhere that to the top. I could put a different colored thread through there as well and I could ink the edges as well. Maybe even stamp on there too. Bring in a little bit of the washi and overlap that too. So uh, I could really have a lot of fun with tags and tabs and they really are one of the easiest things to a, get your hands on but also to add to your projects. The last embellishment I absolutely couldn't live without is liquid droplets. Now these are named lots of different things. So usually Tonic Nouveau ones are one of the most popular brands, but there are enamel droplets, for example, out there from different brands too. And with these, there are a few tricks to using them, but I'm going to use them in, or I often use them in exactly the same way as I did my gems and pearls with regard to placement. But because these are liquid, you can actually create larger and smaller dots depending on how much you apply. So with each of these, what I tend to do is um, go onto a scrap piece of cardstock first. So just squeeze that out because there's often a little bit of air in the tube. And if you were to do this directly to your card, first of all, and the air comes out, you're going to have a big splattered mess. So just ensure that the uh, liquid inside is down at the bottom and there's no air stuck in the tube that needs to come out. So that looks fine to me. So to get the perfect dot, I'm going to go carefully and slowly. I'm going to do my dots in a similar way to how I did on my card. So I'm going to put either five or seven on there usually, and I'm going to space them out in a similar way. So they get smaller as they get further away from the centerpiece here, this black area. So I'm going to slowly squeeze, not quite touching my card, quite a lot. And then instead of just lifting off, I'm going to turn I'm going to spiral as I lift off uh, a bit like you would if you were doing a whippy ice cream so that way you get a really nice finish it rounds off it prevents any strings and that will settle into a really nice little domed droplet there I don't try to lean over this and always always do this last because the chances are you will put your hand in it and it does take they do take a good half an hour to dry off or certainly be surface dry so as I say similar sort of place, placement to the gems and the pearls but I've just used that one there using the black again they come in such a range of colors they are inexpensive as well so you can really stock up on different colors if you want to and try out different brands too but Definitely liquid enamel drops are a really fun way of applying different size droplets to your projects. So there's so many different ways of adding embellishments to your projects and of course it really depends on what suits your style and which ones you find easiest to use. Hopefully this has given you some ideas with your existing embellishments or maybe sparked some creativity with ones that you don't have already and you might go looking for those now too. Don't forget for more tips and tutorial videos like this subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can purchase anything that we've touched on at Craft stash just here and we think you would really like this video just here. Take care everybody, I'll see you again very soon.